right, uh, welcome back to the verdict, our election studios, where we're bringing you news from the field, from our correspondents who are all over the country. And we'll keep doing that as we progress. And straight away we go to Cano, where we, Idris is on standby uh, to give us information on what is new right now. So, Idris, uh, if you're ready, ready well, at the moment, not, apparently not, not he's sure. uh, not ready for us, but we'll, um, we'll I'm very sure that he'll, as soon as he's ready, he'll um, let us. Because um, Cano is one of those states to watch um, from that research of um, January 2019. And... So far, there haven't been such serious incidences to give anyone concern. That's, yeah. that's refreshing. That's, that's good to know. Let's just hope that you know, we're able to keep it at that. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, he, uh, Idris was actually reporting from uh, Nasara State. Yeah. Sorry, Nasara local government area in Kano State, mm -hmm. not from Nasara State. And as quickly as we get him, but uh, okay, these so are some of the pictures that are coming through. In Edo State, for instance, the elections are still uh, on the way. These are pictures that got in just moments ago. From Unit 1, Ward 4, Itzako Central, Local Government yes, Area in Edo exactly. State. Uh, yeah, and that's um, apparently uh, something very interesting for the people there. Uh, this is uh, Bayelsa. Uh, 2,090 voters are expected to cast their votes, you know, at Ward 2, Unit 5 in Toru Orua, Alabama, uh, local government area of Bielsa State. And the officials are done and uh, waiting for the voters. And this is Lagos, Ogudu, actually. Uh, major logistics and deployment of problem at Anglican School, Ogudu, in um, uh, Koshafe, local government area. Materials and personnel as at this uh, as at 8.40 a.m., not yet deployed. This so this is a similar scenario that we had in, uh, in over, don't forget the uh, municipality where we had said that uh, as at almost about the same time to 8.40 a.m., we hadn't had the, uh, those electoral officials who were supposed to be there at the time. It was also in Lagos, you know, remember, at Aja, Badori area, where the uh, core members were <coughs> down in tools. Uh, even the demand guru saying that they had to be paid, but Mr. Koye had spoken to that. But we do hope that that message will percolate to them so that they can then carry out their functions or else we will have a situation on our hands in same, those same, same scenario played out um, earlier on today at uh, Place Anthony um, here in Lagos. Let's just hope that, you know, no matter what the delays are, they are resolved within a good time because it doesn't take long before people get restless and want to go back home. Yes, uh, that, that's the first trigger. That's the first trigger to uh, voter apathy. And uh, a lot of people will begin to lose um, uh, trust in the process. And we don't want to get to that point. So we yeah. expect that the uh, NYSA officials, especially in, in, mm -hmm. in, in, the, uh, in the previous case, the NYS that uh, Mr. Okoye referred to, the NYSA officials yeah. should be able to be up and about and address this concern as quickly as possible so okay. that at least the, the uh, ad hoc staff or the coppers uh, get back to their posts and uh, make sure that the process uh, doesn't record this kind of hiccups again. Yeah. It's very, very instructive. Uh, we can't go to Kano. Is Kano? Okay. Well, not, not sure Kano is. Kano, is it ready? Well, Kano is getting ready, most certainly. Maybe doing some press-offs just <laughs> <That's already laughs> to, moment, to um, do it right. All right, well, uh, back to Abuja then, because uh, uh, Chima Amadi of the Center for Transparency Advocacy has since joined us in our studios in Abuja, alongside uh, Mr. Festus Okoye, uh, who is the National Commissioner for INEC uh, in the moment. But uh, Mr. Amadi, uh, give us, we know that, uh, yes, you're also keeping tabs on the process, but we had a lot coming through from different areas today. What have you seen today? Uh, good morning, Shemale uh, and the crew in the studio. We have seen, um, a marked improvement uh, from what happened um, at the presidential elections. I think uh, INEC has um, learned from uh, learned some valuable lessons from the events of um, the uh, February 22nd presidential elections. Um, we've seen that um, unlike uh, the presidential elections when by this time uh, observers were reporting 41 percent deployment we are seeing, according to the reports that we have seen so far, that deployment is far, far exceeding that mark, uh, going into the higher 80% percent, uh, percentage points. Uh, we have seen a very smooth, smooth 
logistical deployment. In fact, from what we gathered, as far back as uh, 48 hours ago, INEC was, was ready with uh, its deployments in every part of the, of the country. Um, we've seen all the issues that were addressed the last time, that were raised the last time, addressed one way or the other. And then the Commission has also made some very symbolic gestures. Uh, for example, if you recall, in Oweri, where it was reported that um, a particular candidate had to secure uh, a return through, uh, you know, under duress. The INEC a few days ago uh, made this categorical statement that um, such circumstances will not be tolerated by deciding to withhold the, you know, the issuance of a certificate of return for such people, not just in Oweri, even in Benue State, if I'm not mistaken, if the National Commissioner will um, uh, guide me there, in Benue State too, um, refusing to issue a return on, thereby sending a clear statement to anybody or people, individual or groups that want to use such tactic, you know, this is a new entrance in our polity. We've seen before the starting of ballot boxes, we've seen before um, where uh, INEC hard work staff is, you know, is, uh, you know, so, uh, forced to, uh, you know, perhaps surrender election materials. But this is a new one where hard work staff are abducted, taken to a place, kidnapped, and forced to write results. It's a new one. And uh, if it is not dealt with summarily the way INEC is going about it, and especially they also need some help uh, by the, the judiciary to ensure that this kind of attitude is not rubber stamped, I think that would be going a long way. Um, it's slightly peaceful. We are seeing uh, people queuing you know, in the different polling units to vote. Of course, pockets of violence here and there, for example, reports reaching us is that there has been a, an issue of a burn, burning down of an INEC office in a Boeing state. It's just, it's just breaking. Um, perhaps um, the authorities there will hurry up to make sure that there's no breakdown of law and order. But on the whole, I think so far, uh, in terms of deployments and peaceful voting, very little incidents of carriage malfunction from our observers. I think uh, that uh, INEC has listened and uh, they have improved their game, but it's still very early in the day. Let's see how it proceeds and see uh, what events will unfold and how it deals it. But so far in my book, in the book of the observer group that I represent, I think everything is proceeding normally as um, it should.